Welcome to our Cornerstone Church Kingston podcast series. We've been looking together at some of the different animals in the Bible. And last week was our first one, and we were talking about the ant. Mm -hmm. And uh, this week we are thinking about the pig. Pig. Uh, The pig and what the Bible tells us about the pig. So you've heard of Peppa Pig. Oh, yeah. This is Bible pig. (laughs) Uh, You know, what do we learn about the pig from... uh, from from the Bible, and we're going to begin, aren't we, with um, with a, with a few questions, which yeah. you can uh, you can answer along with at home as well. Yeah. So we're going to do three true or false questions. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'll ask the question, and then you and Tom can guess whether you think it's true or false. Here we go. So here's the first one: Pigs are very clean animals. True or false? I think that's got to be true, and the reason is because. Like it sounds like it should be false, <laughs> well, because they're always with so these muddy. Things, it's and... often the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we think of pigs as really muddy, dirty creatures, and they do love to be in the mud. But I guess there's probably really good yeah. cleanliness habits going on. Yeah. So apparently, it's it's true. Pigs are very clean animals. Mm. Um, and so when your mum says to you, or your dad says to you, your bedroom looks like a pigsty, you can say, "Well, thank you very much." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's because uh, so actually, pigs like to roll around in mud to cool themselves down. Like we will jump in the swimming pool, a pig will roll around in mud. Uh, but normally, when they're not cooling down, they're very clean. Very clean. There we go. There you go. Okay, here we go. True or false, mother pigs sing to their babies. hmm. You were saying something something very interesting to me earlier about pigs. Yeah. And about their ability to communicate. Yeah, well, um, so apparently scientists have worked out they're really good at communicating. Mm. And they have, some of them have up to 20 different oinks and squeals and grunts, which all just mean different things. Could you make a song out of that, do you think? Oh, me personally, or or <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, so I reckon based on that, I reckon that could be true. The answer is true. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it says this is the sweetest thing ever. Mother pigs sing to their babies while nursing, mm. and newborn piglets learn to run towards their mother's voices, and they constantly communicate with each other. So there you go. Mm-hmm. A mummy pig will be singing to its baby pigs. Very good. Um, and then finally, uh, pigs. Uh, this is a sort of a two in one. Go on. Pigs don't dream. Right. But they like to sleep nose to nose. Uh, okay. I can't see how those things are related necessarily. <laughs> but well, um, they both happen when they're asleep. Well, I think they do. I think they must. I think they do dream. Okay. Um, because most things do. So if you look at like some, you know, we had dogs growing up. If you look they, at them on the carpet, they they, and and you know, uh, the pig is more intelligent than the dog. So I would, I, I guess the pig does dream. I think they probably don't always sleep nose to nose. I, I don't think I've ever noticed that before. But so you're right. The pigs do dream. Yeah. So that bit's uh, that bit was false because I said pigs don't dream. So they do dream, and apparently they like to stay connected with each other by sleeping close together, often touching sort of snout to snout. Right. As See, they fall if I asleep. think about doing that with Laura, that that's r- would really not be good. Nose to uh, nose, <laughs> yeah. Nose to Speak nose, breathing. just the breath <laughs> yeah, in each other's faces. Uh, but I you're can't, yeah. absolutely right. They are very intelligent as well. And so, yeah, I wonder what a pig dreams of. Yeah, do I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Singing to other pigs, maybe. Yeah, probably. Um, well, uh, I don't know how you managed to get on with that quiz, but we're, we're thinking, we are thinking about the pig, and the pig is a great animal. I mean, the pig is delicious. I mean, you know, if you just think about all the tasty stuff that comes from the pig. Mm. Uh, you've got the the the, the bacon, mm. and you've got sausages, yeah. and you've got maybe you've had like you know roast pork with crackling, yeah, uh, or um, I mean pork Chris- scratching. Christmas dinner <laughs> would be very different, wouldn't it, without the without pig. The, the pig in the blanket, the pig, the pig the within blanket. the pig. Yeah. It's a double pig feast, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so we love the pig and we're thankful for the pig and uh, it's uh, it's delicious. Um, and yet, look at the Bible and, um, you know, the pig doesn't have a hard time so much, but mm. it certainly um, is talked about in a less positive way than we might think today, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So because the pig, when you look at it, looks quite dirty and it likes to roll in mud... God has used it as a picture for us uh, to tell us something about ourselves. So he says, as the pig is wallowing in mud and 
treading around and in, in a big pile of muck. He he's, he's wants to show us that is a little bit like what we're like mm. because we um, have uh, sinned before God and we've done wrong things and we want to follow our own way. We don't want to follow God's way. And because of that, we're very dirty inside. Mm. And so God has given us the pig uh, to show us a little bit what we're like inside. Um, and that helps us because without got that picture, maybe we wouldn't be able to tell that we're mm. quite so dirty on the inside and we need washing. Right, right. So it's not that the pig um, is essentially wrong because God God made the pig mm. and uh, created the pig and the pig is a good thing in that sense, but um, it becomes a picture of, doesn't it, uncleanness. And uh, because in the Old Testament, what God's people ate and drank uh, was a way of saying to the world, we're different, mm. God is our God, we follow our God and that affects everything we do. Um, they were to stay away from the pig for, for those kinds, kinds of reasons. And when you get into the New Testament part of the Bible, second half of the Bible, um, just as you say, you find that the pig kind of continues to stand for um, uncleanness. Mm. And so there's the wonderful story of the prodigal son, uh, the runaway son who leaves his father, uh, doesn't want anything to do with his family home anymore, spends all of his money and uh, ends up not only working with pigs, but eating with pigs. Mm. And uh, for a Jewish audience, that would have been a, a shocker mm. um, because no Jewish father would want their son to end up eating eating uh, pig food. And so that, that physical picture... Mm. Is, is a description of what he's become on the inside, separate, far away, unclean. Uh, and yet in that moment, he comes to his senses and he realizes, hold on, I can go home to dad and and he'll make everything right. Um, so so there's that, isn't there? So yeah. and, and so there's a, there's a picture of kind of spiritual stuff going on there. And, and how do we relate to the pig now? We're not in the Old Testament now. We yeah. live this side of the New Testament. Yeah. How do we approach the pig? Think the about pig. the pig. Well, we can be very thankful for the pig now mm. because Jesus uh, came and told us uh, that, that this was just a picture. He says that it's not what goes inside you that makes you unclean. So it's not if you eat pig, you're unclean. Mm. But Jesus says it's what comes out of your heart that makes you unclean. It's our heart that's the problem. But because Jesus um, has cleansed us and cleaned us uh, because of the cross, um, our hearts are clean before God. Mm. Um, and that means that the the picture of the pig being dirty uh, is no longer necessary for us um, in a sense. So we can eat pig, mm. we can be thankful. Mm. And and the Bible says that if we eat uh, with thanks to God, which is why we pray before mm. we eat um, dinner or lunch, we say, thank you God for this food. Mm. Um, if we do that and we thank God for it, uh, then it's then it's fine to eat, it's clean to eat. Mm. And that's because Jesus has come and, and, and made it clean for us. Yeah, very good. And so, you know, when we look across the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see that um, holiness is still important for God's people. Mm -hmm. And um, holiness affects every part of our lives, including eating and drinking. But the way in which we show ourselves to be different from the world is no longer through dietary laws um, because it in fact it always was about it always was really about the heart mm. um, and uh, as you say what goes into a person can't really uh, no. affect where they stand before God it's what comes out it's the, it's the heart and so we can and we're very pleased about this aren't we we can oh, yeah. get a pack of bacon we can get the finest sausages mm. the pigs in blankets and we can say thank you god yeah uh, for this delicious this delicious animal <laughs> um, yes. so there we go next time you're watching peppa pig or you're going around bockets farm or something like that and you look at the pigs you know spend time studying the pig and remember the lessons of the pig you know once unclean now clean and uh you know and then go and eat a bacon sandwich mm. <laughs> maybe not in front of the pig <laughs> no yeah <laughs>